Right, we're back. Uh, it's been a minute. Those of you who subscribed, thank you very much. Um, you might have noticed we haven't put out any content for a while. There's a very good reason for that, and that's because we've been moving. Um, I'm sure you can understand moving a functional recording studio is not the work of but a moment. Uh, in fact, it's the stuff nightmares are made of, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, but anyway, we're here now, and we're very fortunate. We've really fallen on our feet with this one. We're uh, we're part of a brand new project that's happening in Manchester that's going to reshape the uh, the Manchester music scene. It's very echoey out here, but as you can see, there's a lot going on. Um, unfortunately, it's a super secret project, so I can't give you any specific details about it just yet, but we'll have more about that coming in a video very soon. Anyway, back to the move. Um, as you can see, this still need to get a door on there. Uh, there's a lot to do. Everything's uh, in a complete mess. But during the downtime, I had a quick read of some of the questions on YouTube and some people were asking about the uh, routing, how uh, we route the console and all the analog equipment here at Gorilla. Uh, so I thought, what better time to do a video about uh, routing everything here than when I've actually got to plug it all in again. Um, got to plug it in from scratch. So uh, that's what this video is going to be about. Okay, so as you can see, we have got absolutely miles and miles of uh, various different types of cables uh, with various different types of connectors on and all these have to be routed back uh, through the um, studio back to the back of the console and plugged into the uh, the corresponding channels so you can see here at the back of the console all the uh, main inputs at the bottom there they're the xlrs and we have to plug in the main patch box which is out in the uh, in the live room that is connected through this uh, multi-core cable which has 32 XLR uh, connectors in it and these uh, need to be plugged into the corresponding channels so that when you plug a microphone into channel uh, 1 it is routed into channel 1 on the back of the console so there's 32 of these uh, they're just standard XLR connectors um, and they're in this big heavy multi-core cable now you can see on the left there I'm resting it on the top of a uh, flight case um, I like to do that because it's a very, very heavy cable and uh, if you just leave it hanging, it will be tugging quite hard on uh, on all these little um, XLR cables and uh, we don't want to damage them. So I uh, hide a little uh, flight case behind the console and uh, I have it resting on the top of there so it doesn't tug on the cables. So now uh, all those are patched in. We've got 32 channels there coming from the main live room. So these are going directly into the console, so when you plug a mic in, it goes directly into the corresponding uh, number on the back of the console, providing I've plugged them in the right way around. Thankfully, they are all numbered. So now we're going to take uh, an output from the console. So this is an output post fader. Um, it's marked on the back of the console there as D out. So the signal comes in through the XLR and now goes out through this um, jack connector. Uh, it's a jack connector on this end. It's a tip sleeve connector, not a tip ring sleeve and it goes to a phono um, connector on the other end of the uh, of this big cable. So the signal is now coming out through these cables and going to the phono connections on the back of the tape machine. So that's the output from the console going to the tape machine. So these are the phono connectors. These plug into the, uh, into the tape machine. Thankfully, there's only uh, 15 of these to plug in, even though it's a 16 channel tape machine. Uh, we only use 15 of the channels because we use channel 16 for the for the time code. Um, that obviously would be up to uh, each individual whether they wanted to use that or not. There are different ways of, uh, of, of do, sorting out the time code on your devices. Um, but we just like to use the channel on the tape. And then there are outputs from the tape machine which go back to the tape returns on the console. Now, they go via the uh, patch um, rack which is sitting next to the console. Unfortunately, the camera decided it was going to not record that bit. Um, but for all intents and purposes, the signal, unless there's something plugged into that patch, uh, the signal does come directly back into the uh, the tape returns on the back of the console anyway. So don't worry if you're struggling to follow all this. I will recap at the end uh, the actual signal path uh, and show you with a microphone um, and explain exactly where the signal path is going and where we can optionally route it to using the rack as well. 
All right, so now you've watched me uh, physically plug everything back in, uh, we're gonna check that I've got it right. I'm gonna take this uh, mic, go over to the uh, patch box out in the main live room, plug that into one, and quickly run over to the console. Okay, so we're over at the console. I'm gonna bring up the uh, mic pot for channel one, bring up the fader, and there we go. Just put the camera on it, mic check, one, two, channel one. So we're coming through on channel one. And if we go over to the tape machine, we are on channel one on the tape machine. It's coming through on channel one on the tape machine as well. It's great. So we have uh, successfully routed at least channel one correctly. We'll have to uh, go through them and go through all of them and double check them all, but I'm not going to subject you to that. Um, I will, however, quickly recap uh, how uh, each channel is routed and where the signal path goes. Okay, so we are back behind the console now, and as you can see here, we're looking at channel one. Uh, and the mic in is the input. You've just seen me plug in out, uh, out in the main live space in the patch box, the microphone that's coming in here. So this is the uh, the main input for channel one, standard XLR, and it is coming out uh, once it's been down the channel strip of the console. This is the direct out and this goes to the tape machine. Then from the tape machine, uh, the signal goes all the way over to the other side of the console, the uh, colored cables there, that's the patch bay. So it, the tape returns go via the patch bay. Now, if there's nothing plugged into the patch bay, the signal comes directly back into here. And this is the tape in, you can see there. So that's the tape return. Now, if there is something plugged into the patch, uh, obviously, that's where we can then take the signal and route that anywhere else we want. But for all intents and purposes, the signal comes in on the mic input, goes out to the tape machine, and then comes back in on the tape return after having gone to the rack. Now, uh, let's go over to the rack and have a look what that does. All right, so we're over at the rack now, and as you can see here, we've got uh, all the channels coming from the console. Um, so the, uh, the tape machine returns the signal back via this point here. So if there's nothing plugged into here, it's going straight back uh, into the console. But at this point, if we so desire, we could uh, take the signal and patch in any of these lovely pieces of equipment here. We've got some compressors, some uh, effects units. We've also got another little wheelie rack that we could take the signal to. So if we wanted, at the moment, there's nothing plugged into it. So the signal is just coming from the tape machine coming straight through this connector and going back into the input of the console. But if we plug this in here, we could take over to the Elise's MIDI verb and then return the signal from the MIDI verb back to channel one. And that's now patched in this Elise's MIDI verb. Like I say, we could patch in pretty much anything we want at this point. But if there's nothing plugged into here, the signal is literally just returning straight back from the tape machine back into channel one so as you can see the way we've got it routed anything that's uh, been patched in by the patch bay is on the tape return side so we're not actually recording with any of the uh, with any of the outboard equipment it's uh, it's in post for mix down that's just the way that we've got it routed you could of course uh, route the patch bay in first if you'd like and then you would be recording with the uh, with any of your outboard effects but we tend to favor recording dry and uh, adding uh, effects and uh, uh, compressors and things like that later and um, that's just the way we do it here so for all intents and purposes it's a very very straightforward setup that we have here um, basically the signal comes in to uh, the console it goes back out the console over to the corresponding channel on the tape machine it then returns from the tape machine over to the uh, patch bay in the rack there and from the patch bay, we can patch in any of this equipment if we so desire. Otherwise, it just goes straight back to the corresponding channel on the um, on the console there. All right, so I hope that's answered uh, your questions about how everything's rooted here. I thought it was a good opportunity to uh, physically demonstrate it, being that I had to uh, plug everything back in. Um, now we're all settled in our new place and everything's uh, plugged in and working properly. We're going to be uh, putting out some more videos very soon, so uh, stay tuned for those.